Okay, so this hive in particular still has two medium supers of honey on top of it. And last, last we checked it, uh, they had quite a bit of honey in both of these supers. And so it should be time to harvest honey. It should be past time to harvest honey. Let's see what these bees are doing as we get into the summer. We've still got a pretty good bee population up on top. Even though it's the heat of the day, those telescoping covers do a pretty good job of keeping these hives insulated. And so let's see, uh, let's see what they're doing. So this upper super, I can already see, is pretty much completely full of honey. So they have packed it out. Beautiful, look at that. Just a beautiful cap frame of honey. Now, I would say this is ready to harvest. I mean, yeah, they still haven't capped some of that honey in the middle, but they've capped everything around the edge. It's well into July, it's incredibly hot. I mean, we can do a shake test you know, and nothing, nothing comes out at all. When it gets this hot and this dry, you know, the bees just often stop capping honey. And so, you know, I'm not worried when most of the frame is capped, it's hot and it's dry outside, I would go ahead and harvest this even if it's not fully capped over. But this top, bee, this top medium is full of honey. I can lift up on it and yeah, it's full. So it's probably got, you know, I'm gonna say about 40 pounds of honey in it. Now this is a hive that we had bottom supered last month with foundation. So we put a medium box of foundation on the bottom and let's see what they've done with it. So they've drawn some of it out. They've drawn, as you can see, they've drawn some of these frames out, but they didn't draw them all out. We did some checkerboarding of previously drawn frames and those, they pretty much filled with honey. But I am starting to see, look at this frame in the bottom. So that whole middle area has been completely cleared out of honey. So they're starting to eat the honey that's still that's left on the hive. You know, when you see these supers and they've got drawn comb, but the bees have cleared all the honey out of that drawn comb, it's a good sign that the honey flow is completely over and the bees are actually starting to consume this honey. So you can see it on this frame too. You've got honey around the edge but all the honey's cleared out in the middle. So I would expect to see that. I mean, in my opinion, in most areas of the South, the honey flow ended, you know, two to three weeks ago. And so I'm expecting to see the bees now eat that honey rather than bring in a surplus. So we're gonna get these hives extracted quickly before they eat all the honey and then we'll probably need to do some feeding afterwards to replenish their stores. I want to make sure the second box on these hives has at least 30 pounds of stored honey or syrup in it. So after we harvest this honey, if there's not 20 or 30 pounds left in the bottom brood box, we're going to quickly start, uh, start feeding. So let's see what's going on down in the bottom brood box. What's going on with the bee population? Let me adjust this for you here a little bit. So we've got a pretty good bee population, but I will say, I never try to judge the bee population in the middle of a hot day. There's just too many bees outside the hive where it's cooler to accurately judge the bee population. If I'm trying to get a good feel for the adult bee population in a hive, I'm gonna be looking early, early in the morning or very, very late in the day. That's when you're gonna have most of the bees inside the hive. So, that. Uh, this is one of our uh, Texas 5000, I believe, queens. Um, beautiful, beautiful frames of brood. Um, they've still got some pollen, but not a tremendous amount. That's something I'm really looking for this year is how much pollen do these hives have in them? Uh, because if I'm not seeing a, more than a cumulative half frame of pollen, then I'm going to be feeding some pollen patties. And as hot and as dry as this summer is turning out to be, I'm going to go ahead and start feeding pollen patties pretty quick here. So this hive has a pretty good amount of brood, really. They've got about about six frames of brood, which, as hot and as dry as it is, that's that's not bad. They've got let's see, they've got some brood on a seventh frame. So six and a half to seven frames of brood, and the brood looks healthy. Um, but I'm not seeing a tremendous amount of pollen 
a lot of the pollen I am seeing, which you might be able to see on that uh, edge there, that yellow pollen, a lot of the pollen is just one single color, um, which means that our pollen sources, uh, the variety of pollen that the bees could be bringing in is dwindling as a lot of those wildflowers dry up. Uh, they're really only pulling in pollen from a couple kinds of flowers. So some years we don't have to start feeding pollen substitute until August or September. Uh, this year in general, um, I'm recommending we start a little bit earlier, so sometime in July, because it's just getting so hot and dry. We don't want to risk nutritionally starving our bees. So this is a great hive. I mean, they've got some beautiful brood. Um, the queen is still laying well. Um, but I am starting to see less and less pollen in these hives. And so I'm gonna start feeding pollen substitute pretty quickly. And I'm not seeing a lot of stored honey down in their bottom brood box. There's still quite a bit of brood, but they've only got a little bit of honey around that brood. Um, and then we're gonna pull the honey off these top two boxes. Um, and then uh, they're not gonna have hardly any honey stores. So we'll be feeding these hives pretty aggressively as well.